Hey there, good morning, and welcome back to Just the News AM. I'm Carrie Sheffield, and glad you're here with us. We're going to talk more about what's happening with the Uyghur crisis over in China. The Chinese Communist Party is continuing to repress this group, and I am glad to have here on the couch with me Mr. Sali Hudiar. He's the Prime Minister of the East Turkestan government in exile. Good morning, Sali. Good morning. So talk us through first, how did you get elected? Because your government is spread out all over. You're here, you've got folks in Canada, Germany. Walk us through your government structure and, and who exactly are you governing over? So uh, we're a government in exile that was set up in Washington, D.C. in 2004 uh, to represent the interests of uh, East Turkestan and its people. Um, it's a parliamentary uh, system uh, where local representatives are elected by local diaspora communities and they make up the parliament and in turn the parliament uh, elects the uh, president, prime minister and other uh, high-ranking officials. Um, we claim uh, to be the successors of the former uh, East Turkestan Republic which was overthrown on December 22nd, 1949 by the People's Republic of China. Um, at the moment, only our diaspora in electing, you know, official uh, representatives. Um, however, once East Turkestan is independent, um, obviously there won't be a government in exile. We are just interim in the meantime representing our people. Sure. So how many people are in exile and then how many people are back home in the region? So in East Turkestan, we estimate there's about 35 to 40 million people um, that are non-Chinese people, Uyghurs and other Turkic peoples. In the diaspora, there's at least one million. Um, however, uh, unofficial estimates um, put it at up, up to five million. Mm -hmm. In terms of what's happening with the Uyghurs, what should an American audience know? So the American audience needs to know that what's happening to the Uyghurs is nothing less than a genocide. Um, the Chinese government in recent years has locked up millions of people in concentration camps and prisons and using them as uh, slave labor um, to, you know, working as slaves in, on cotton fields to working, you know, in uh, factories producing products that are then sent here to the United States for uh, consumption by the American consumers. So in terms of the people themselves, this has been going on for some time, but has it been got, getting worse under, and what have you seen uh, from President Trump? Because President Trump has had a very aggressive posture toward China. Is it actually getting worse? So prior to the Trump administration um, speaking out on the issue starting in 2017, many, uh, much of the world didn't know about the Uyghurs. In fact, many people never heard of the Uyghurs. Um, President Trump uh, and the administration have been very, uh, uh, you know, they have been raising the issue um, nationally and internationally. Um, and because of Secretary Pompeo's um, act, uh, you know, outspokenness, people know who the Uyghurs are. Um, this obviously, you know, has angered China, but things have uh, not gotten any better. Um, in fact, recently, just yesterday, the Chinese government announced that it's going to continue its uh, policies um, to, quote, fight against terrorism, uh, to push back against uh, Uyghurs, saying that, you know, what we're doing, not, like the Chinese government is not doing anything wrong, and it's just trying to uh, ensure political stability. And what about the Joe Biden administration? What have you heard? What do you expect to see there? So the Biden um, team had uh, made an announcement um, saying that they would recognize uh, it as a genocide um, during the election process. However, um, since, they, since the election process, um, since the, tran like now they're about to transition, they have been largely silent. In fact, Newsweek have reached out to them, even we reached out to them, and they haven't um, reached back out to us. So we're deeply concerned that they might uh, reverse, you know, the policies that the Trump administration has done and that they might take the same position as the uh, Obama administration, which is a position of just silence. Do you think any of this might have to do with Hunter Biden? Because we have a Senate, a group of senators who are investigating the, the incoming president and his business ties to China. Do you think that there might be any sort of conflict of interest there? Uh, there definitely could. I mean, 
with the aspect of Hunter Biden, he actually invested in a Chinese company that was involved in the mass surveillance of Uyghurs in East Turkestan. So he was making money off it? Yes. And has, when you reached out to the Biden team, did you mention this specifically, that concern? I mean, we didn't I mean, we've raised that concern numerous times before, but this round we just were talking about them to, you know, follow up on their promise of recognizing this genocide, to speak out, to urge um, Congress, you know, to pass the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, uh, which has been stuck stuck in the Senate and we haven't gotten a response. Newsweek hasn't gotten a response either. So we saw the Trump administration has put on through executive order orders that American investors cannot invest in Chinese defense companies, certain Chinese defense companies. We have heard that there are some possible loopholes that people are getting around this and folks are worried that with the Biden administration the loopholes could get even wider. What have you heard on that? Um, we've heard the similar similar things. The Trump administration actually has done a lot uh, on this issue. They've sanctioned the uh, several Chinese companies that are involved in the uh, mass uh, atrocities that's happening in East Turkestan. Uh, more specifically, they sanctioned the uh, Bingtuan or the Xinjiang construction and production paramilitary force um, that is directly uh, responsible for these atrocities. All right. Well, thank you so much for letting us know about this. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Stay with us, folks. We've got a look at the Turning Point USA down in West Palm Beach, Florida. Don't you wish you were there? Stay tuned.